And Brandon, let's move on into the next team we're talking about, the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And this one's easy. So the first one, the first question I want to ask you with them is in the Baylor preview, we kind of mentioned their coach, Ryan Gosling, who he's got experience, man. He played Allen and remember the Titans. Well, in the Baylor he, preview. Yeah. You we said talked we about mentioned him. their coach and then you said Ryan Gosling. Yeah. We mentioned Ryan Gosling, who is Texas Tech's. I was making a Ryan Gosling joke. It's Kiff Kingsbury who's the Texas Tech coach. We mentioned him in I'm the s- Baylor preview. I'm still confused. Okay. So I'll I'll say it this way. Cliff Kingsbury, the Texas Tech coach. I tried making a joke. It just went whoosh, no, no, no. right no, over no, no, Brandon's no. I, head. I knew what you were trying to do, but yeah. it just it, instead of going, it fell flat. Yeah, but we mentioned him in the Baylor preview. <clears throat> I want to start with him first in the Texas Tech preview because this is a coach where he's been there for, what, one, two, three, four, five years. This will be a six-year at the head of Texas Tech, only have won six six or more games three times. Last year, yeah, they got a big upset win over Texas, but then lost to Southern Florida or South Florida the next week. I want to ask you with him, is this going to be another year if he goes six wins, if he goes five wins, if he goes four wins, because four is the lowest he's ever done at Texas Tech, will this be another year of yeah, we're going to keep them, and then next year the seat gets hot? Or this year, could that hot seat start to heat up under Cliff Kingsbury? You know what, Ricky? I don't think so. And you want to know why? Because I I think that Texas Tech is too afraid to go out and get anyone Mm -hmm. else because they're afraid they won't be able to find someone who runs an offense as well as Kingsbury does. It's funny that you say that, where you say runs it as well, because this was a... Uh, calculation done by Bill Connolly of SB Nation. Sixty nine percent of our they have to, they got to find a way to replace sixty nine percent of their offensive production from last year. I know they have to find. I'm just gonna round up. They have to find seventy percent, almost three fourths, almost three fourths. I'm rounding way up there by five more percent, but. They almost have to find a big chunk of their offensive production that is bye bye, not coming back this year because they're either graduated or gone pro. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how they end up doing that. They lose Nick Shimanek and his almost four thousand mm-hmm. passing yards. They lose Justin Stockton at running back, his over a thousand all purpose yards. They lose four starting receivers. They've got plenty of new guys to come in and slot in at, re- and in at receiver, but they have all different levels of experience. I mean, it's it's going to be a a kind of a potentially a different look Texas Tech Red Raider offense, mm-hmm. at least to start, because we may have some growing pains in the first couple of games. Then that's I that that's why I think it's going to be it's going to be interesting. It's going to be it's going to be interesting mm-hmm. because. We may not see Texas Tech come right out of the gate and score 50 points in the first two to three games where they have done so so many times before. Well, and the interesting thing, you bring up Simonek, who he's gone. So now it's basically we got to find his replacement. And right now, it looks like McLean Carter is going to be the guy. He's a guy who had kind of had the job a little bit um, and is the favor to start in the spring for 2018. But basically, they have a decision. Well, Cliff has a decision. He's got to go with either Carter. You've got a sophomore in Jet Duffy. Then you've got Juco transfer Nick Gerber, sophomore Colt Garrett, and then true freshman Alan Bowman. For me, the little prediction I'm going to say is I think McLean Carter eventually is the starter in the fall because I think what will happen is unless one of these other guys, mainly I'm looking – at Duffy, and I'm looking at Gerber. If one of those two guys really impresses this spring and in early camp in the fall, unless they overseed expectations, Cliff is going to go with the safer choice, the guy who knows the offense better, who he's more comfortable with, in McLean Carter to be the starter for the Red Raiders to start the year. Yeah, I think McLean Carter right now has the best odds. Um and it's it's funny because he actually made a start over Shimanek mm-hmm. last year in the Texas game. The upset win. It, it was it was the upset win, but the only reason yeah. that they ended up getting the win is because Shimanek came back in and yeah. saved the day because 
Here Carter, I come to save the day. For whatever reason, got that start and mm-hmm. just looked completely dazed. Like one sure what was going on. Mm-hmm. And certainly was not ready for for that game time action. But I, I think that when you give a guy an entire off season to prepare for for these games to be the starter, and you're not giving him, you know, just a couple of days, that's going to be a whole lot, a whole lot of a different story. But you look at the the other guys. I think that uh, you look at Jet Duffy, uh, a guy who certainly had some good throws in the spring. Uh, true freshman Alan Bowman also had good throws during mm-hmm. the spring. So this isn't a closed quarterback competition. This is still one doors open. But I think right now McLean Carter is the favorite. Doesn't mean he can't be unseated from that favorite position. But mm-hmm. right now I, I would definitely give it to him. And and maybe only because he, he really has that kind of game action, even though maybe it wasn't good, but you can still learn from that make changes and everything like that. So I'd say he's 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 got to be the guy right now, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't change. And this may be something even on for 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 this quarterback competition, whoever they go with on opening day may not be the same guy that they that mm-hmm. they go with in week 3. This may be one of those competitions that continues and goes back and forth. Well, and this year in total is I feel like it's going to be an interesting year for Texas Tech because it's not their biggest question mark to me is what we've already said. Because you have to play so so much on offense, you have to find a new starting quarterback, but also find weapons, either running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, guys for this now quarterback to throw to. You are losing, let's be honest, most of your offense at close to 70% of that offensive production. And I look at the schedule this year and it virtually becomes how many games are they going to win this year? And with what they are losing, what they are bringing back, the quarterbacks that they have. And basically if, if McLean Carter is the starter, if I'm a Texas Ra- red Raider football fan, I'm going, all right, I guess he's our starter because he didn't really show me much in that Texas game. Like you said, the only reason they won the game is, is because Nick Simonak, basically, I think it was Mighty Mouse is the theme I was singing with the, here I come to save the day. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure what you were singing, so I just kind of went over. Yeah, it was Mighty Mouse. Really old cartoon, even before I was born, as I pushed the mic. I went to do this, and I just pushed the mic right at you. But I look at the schedule. I'll give you a win over Lamar. Lamar, uh, Not Lamar Jackson, just Lamar. I'll give you a win over Houston. The only reason, but that Houston game, though, I want to put an asterisk next to because, yeah, you beat them on the road last year, but you only beat them by three and you're losing 70. You know, screw it. I'm going to give you a loss for that one. However, the asterisk is still there. That one's a toss up. They could win, but th- really, I'm probably leaning towards a loss really after quickly. just talking myself out of it. You skipped over Ole Miss. I, I, I'm getting to them. I'm getting to them. So Lamar's a win. Houston's a possible win. Kansas Baylor. I got three to four wins right out of the gate. Other than that, I don't see a win. Early on, I was when we were talking Old Miss, I talked in that one like, oh, that's going to be an interesting game. But I'm more confident in that Old Miss team with Jordan Te'amu back there than I am with any of the quarterbacks for Texas Tech. So for me, I feel like how it's going to go, SEC spanks the Big 12 in that game. You win the next two, and then it's like, great, we beat Kansas, we beat Baylor. The question is, do you have another Texas in you? Do you have another game this year, whether it be Texas, whether it be Oklahoma, because both of those games are at home this year, whether it be a West Virginia, Oklahoma State, do you have it in you to upset one of these other Big 12 teams to then go to five win? Hell, if you could upset two of them and go to six wins, that would be beautiful, but I don't see it. I see three to four wins being what I expect. The flip game being that Houston game. The only way they go to four to five is if they have one more upset game like they did against Texas last year. I could see six. Lamar and Houston. I could see West Virginia. Mm -hmm. You're not high on West Virginia. No. No, I'm really not. Not at at this point, I'm not. Uh, Kansas. Iowa State, I know that's one. That one's on the road, but mm-hmm. that could be another one. 
and then Baylor at home to end the season. And that that Baylor game is really kind of a toss. Mm-hmm. To- it's a toss up for me, but and I'm not saying that they that they will win these games. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying I could see six and Ole Miss, maybe, maybe. So right now I would see. But do you I, have I more confidence? Maybe seven. In, do you have more confidence in Ole Miss or do you have more confidence in the Red Raiders? Well, in terms of what I've seen, I know it's from, early. In, in terms of what I've seen from what. Tayamu can mm-hmm. do and what he's been able to produce based off of Compared McLean, to McLean Carter, Carter, who was a deer in the headlights. Yeah. I, I got to go with Ole Miss and uh, mm-hmm. Jordan Tayamu. But we're still long. See, that that's why I love these previews. But, but at the them. same time, yeah, I don't hate them. But they, they don't offer everything that it could be because mm-hmm. within the week's that le- and I guarantee it. This is another reason why I find these previews to be just hy- hysterical, because we do this now. Mm-hmm. In about two months, They'll when they're when starter. they're getting ready, we're gonna have people coming into the comments. You idiots! How did you not know? Blah blah blah. Because we didn't know that two months ago, mm-hmm. moron. So I I I really I I also love them because of that because they think like we like mm-hmm. did the preview yesterday when they were watching the video, but. That's that's the drawback is because there's still so much more to go. There's mm-hmm. so much. I mean, the spring is one thing. The spring and the quarterback battles in the spring, that's one thing. But that continues through the summer for so many teams. So many teams that we've talked about. There are quarterback battles that are going to con- continue to go on, and this could be one, like I said, that continues throughout the season. But if it continues throughout the season, I think we're going to see a very mediocre mediocre Red Raider air attack because they won't be going with just one guy Mm -hmm. like they have been for the last couple of seasons. They may be switching back, you know, from this guy to that guy, from Carter to Duffy to Bowman to, you know, whoever else. And that's where things could get a little tricky because then you lose that rhythm, you lose that feel. That's why I'm always a big proponent of go with one guy, stick with one guy, but again, that's not always easy. I also wonder, like I said at the beginning, I wonder how long is long enough when it comes to Kingsbury. And the reason why I say that is most coaches who would have the same thing, 30 and 33, not even a winning record in his first, what, five years as head coach of the Red Raiders. Any other program, even a program like Illinois, who is not on the same level as Texas Tech, he would have been fired from Illinois football. I just, I feel like when it comes to this program, is this year going to be a year of excuses when it comes to Cliff Kingsbury? Or will it be a year of either one of two things? One, something actually happens. It's like, hey, we went four and eight this year again. We can't have this again. You're fired. Or will it be a, hey, we can't have this again. Next year, you better make a bowl game or you're fired. Which one are we going to see? Or do we just see like what you said where, oh, I think the Texas Tech is just too afraid to fire him. And it's basically that situation of like, la-di-da-di-da, I'm fine sitting here between five and seven wins. La-di-da-di-da. Like, that's what I think with this team. Maybe not exactly like that. I hope they do But it's like, you're just sitting there like... I look at the wins and losses over the last five years, and except for that first year, which it wasn't even his recruits that year, Mm -hmm. I just see mediocrity. That's what I see. Not even good mediocrity because you got four and five win seasons thrown in there, and plus the three bowl games that you did make, you won the one without your talent, you lost the two with your talent. So it's like, come on, what are you doing? Texas Tech has always been one of the Big 12 teams that I've always dogged on for being one of the worst defensively, mm-hmm. and basically because they have been. But I, I think if you look at this team on the defensive side of the football, I think they're going to be drastically improved, and certainly drastically improved in their past in their past defense. They stopped the run a little bit more effectively um, than last year than they had in previous years. I, I think that you can watch for this Red Raider secondary to make some plays. Uh, they they were they, you know there's always been too many big plays that they allow in that secondary but I think that with a little bit more experience they'll be able to I think hold down a couple of teams instead of giving up the 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 big deep bombs all the time uh, the front six replaces just one piece up front mm-hmm. however 
it's a very talented position in the in the nose guard. They they lose Thomas in that spot, but I think Kingsbury. What we're gonna see more this season is more of a balanced team, whereas it's almost always been offense that's led everything. You know, it's offense and not much defense at all. I think we're going to see a little less offense. Not necessarily because of anything that Kingsbury's trying to do, mm-hmm. just because of what he has to work with. And I think we're going to see a defense that is a little bit more improved. And we may see one of the most balanced attacks um, in the King- under the Kingsbury era. So I'm doing a little bit of digging on this Texas Tech team from 2013. We're going to play a little bit of trivia. I know how much you like your trivia, Brandon. I'm terrible at trivia. I know. This is why you're going to like it. They invite me to trivia for the jokes and the humor. That year, Texas Tech had two quarterbacks that threw for over, one threw for over 2,700 yards, the other one threw for over 2,300 yards. Both of them transferred from Texas Tech, and in their last season in college, were really good pro. Well, one was a lot better than the other, but both of those were drafted in the NFL draft. I'll give you a hint. One of them was a walk on. That should be a huge hint. And second off, got drafted in the top three of this year's NFL draft. He went number one, actually. Who went to the Cleveland Browns? No way. Baker Mayfield. No way. Baker Mayfield had 2,300 yards for them, 12 touchdowns, nine interceptions. The other guy? In that 2013 year, and he was a guy who, that was his freshman year as well, played another year for um, Texas Tech where he had over 2,500 yards. Then he had another season where he only had 300 yards. Not sure if he was injured that year or not, but then transferred to Cal. He got drafted not in the first round. He was drafted in the third round of the 2017 draft by the New York Giants and eventually started a game over Eli Manning last year. Davis Webb. Davis Webb. Davis Webb. Oh, my gosh. And he had over 42, almost 4,300 yards for Cal in his last year in college football. Their leading receiver, this is a name I have not heard in quite a while. He was drafted in the 2014 NFL Draft by the New York Jets. He is currently, according to ESPN, a tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs. His initials are J.A. His first name is Jace. Uh, uh, Amaro. Jace Amaro. And then their leading running back that year was, I don't think he got drafted in the NFL. It was Kenny Williams. Not the Kenny Williams from TNT, though. But that was the talent that Cliff was dealing with when he went eight wins. And he hasn't gotten there since. So for me, if I'm Texas Tech and I'm looking at it, if you don't get to a bowl game this year, like maybe I tell this to Cliff behind closed doors. I call him into my office and I'm the AD, and I'm saying, hey, I want two things from you. I want to, one, get to a bowl game. You get to six wins however way you do it. If we get into a bowl game with five wins, that ain't going to help you. You got to get with six. And number two, I want to win said bowl game. If you do those two things, you have saved your job. If not, you're done at the end of the year. That's what I would do because you look at this and it's like, Texas Tech, are you going to be happy with being a four to may, four to six, maybe a seven-win team under Cliff Kingsbury, or are you going to be a team that says, hey, you know, enough is enough. We're not going to be mediocre. If you ain't going to make us better, then we are going to get someone better because all I hear about you is how moms are hitting on you on the recruiting trail. It's not really paying off when those recruits come and play for Texas Tech. I, I could envision a scenario where Texas Tech's offense is not what it's been the last couple of mm-hmm. years, and they come in and they say, done. Done right then. Yep. Done right then. Well, and what's funny about this is the last thing I'll bring up about that 2013 team. So they started the year with wins over SMU. Stephen F. Austin, number 24 TCU, Texas State, Kansas, Iowa State. That was a bad Iowa State team that year, by the way. 
Um, and then at West Virginia. So they start the year, what would that be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and oh. They end the regular season with a loss against number 17, Oklahoma, a loss against 18, Oklahoma State, a loss against Kansas State, a loss against number four, Baylor, a loss at Texas. They lose their last five games and then beat Arizona State, who was the 16th team in the country, 37 to 23 in the Holiday Bowl. So really that was a year where it's like, wow, you're 7 and 0. And then we played the really good teams in the Big 12 and we couldn't win. We could cuz Kansas State was a really good team yeah. in 2013. I believe, don't get me wrong, was that the year they had um oh, I'm trying to think of the quarterback that they had. Um they had Tyler Lockett was their main quarterback that year. Um was he the quarterback? No, he was wide receiver. Who am I thinking I was is the Tyler Lockett? I'm trying think to think of their quarterback. quarterback from that year, and the only thing I can remember from him is that one of the games they said he played the violin. I can't remember his name, though. That's where you guys it's come in in the comment helpful. section. Any final thoughts about Texas Tech and their season this year? It's going to be an interesting one. I think it's going to be a lot different from what they've seen in the past in terms of their offensive production. That's just me. I could end up being completely wrong, and most people in the comments will probably say that I am. Well, this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you think down below in the comment section. Let us know what you think about Texas Tech. How many wins are they going to get? What should we expect from this offense this year? Let us know down below in that comment section.